So I'm down in uh, Galleon's Reach, down on the edge of the, uh, the Royal Docks near Beckton, and this is picking up on the walk I did around the Royal Docks earlier in the summer. And somebody that lives around here got in touch and said, look, I can show you some areas going on around Galleon's Reach and around North Woolwich that uh, you might be interested in. So today, it's a bit of a different uh, kind of uh, video today. I'm being guided by uh, a local who's going to take me some places that don't really know where we're going to go. They're a little bit camera shy, so they won't be appearing on camera, but they'll be feeding me information as we go and taking me some special places. I'll give you one little tip now. We're going to go to the old Victorian pleasure gardens that were down on the riverfront where they used to do like balloon rides over the Thames, which is incredible, isn't it? So here you can see more evidence of the enormous amount of development that's going on around this area, the riverside over there. One of the reasons that um, I'm down here today and I'm being shown around by one of the locals is that this is an area of enormous change and it's going to look completely different in 10 years time. This is one of the most uh, magical locations in London here. So I, I came and stood on this bridge when I did the walk uh, for my book, This Other London. I did a walk down to Beckton in search of Stanley Kubrick's full metal jacket. I think I've already uh, mentioned that. And at the time I thought this was one of the most stunning <laughs> locations in London because you can stand on the bridge over there and the planes come down so low over this bridge it feels like they're parting your hair. And there's something quite awesome about it is because they're coming into land at the city airport. So this is uh, some of the area we're going to walk around later. I don't actually know what this is called here on the left. Down the end there you've got Royal Albert Wharf, which is another sort of new development. And I believe that brick building in the middle there, I'll zoom in, that's actually still a working pumping house. It's kind of incredible. And then we're going to walk around there. And then over here is quite an interesting place. You can see the boats down there. And this is Galleons Point Marina, which I believe is currently subject to some evictions. I think the current owners of that wharf who built it up from scratch are being evicted, along with all the boats. I'll find out more about that later when we get down there. That's another part of disappearing London. And that dark ridge behind there, I don't know if you can see the dark ridge on the high ground, that's Abbey Woods and Lenay Abbey, which is where I went for chapter three of my book, This Other London. That's an amazing location. Maybe we should go back there and do another video because that's an incredible place. So this is uh, the other side of the marina and this is actually called Albert Island. And apparently it's just been purchased by the, uh, the GLA. And they're gonna do something here. I'm not entirely sure what. They might be sort of building a marina here, doing a boat repair yard here. This is another zone of change. This is the Bascule Bridge, and it actually uh, lifts up. I suppose when the big boats are coming through to the docks on the other side there. Obviously now it would be the big yachts, wouldn't it? This here apparently is sea birch. This area here is effectively an island because it's linked to the mainland by these two bridges, there's this bridge here and there's a bridge on the other side of the, that cuts through the docks on the other side there and effectively pe local people here sometimes refer to themselves as islanders 
steps, which is amazing. Of course, you've got the Thames on the other side. Look, you can see the, the high ground on the other side of the Thames there. So this, uh, all these cranes you can see here, this is uh, part of the extension, or the expansion of City Airport. They're going to increase the number of flights in there. So you can imagine what it must be like for the people living in those flats over there. This council estate over there, which will predate the airport. And they're now going to have the plane, the runways were currently there, but they're going to add some more runways here, right in front of these flats, which is kind of incredible really, isn't it? So I've only been walking now about half an hour here with one of the local residents and already it's just such an incredible landscape. I mean, I'm familiar with, with this area here. I've walked around here a bit, but this whole area behind me here, totally sort of unknown to me and really, um, yeah, I've really had my eyes open to a whole new little pocket of London and a, a culture, like the culture of the islanders, the people living over here that would refer themselves to living on the island because they were dependent on these bridges that, that are... Look, and look, here's the, here's the joint. Here. And, and when this bridge lifted up, if you lived on the island, you were cut off by road from the mainland. It's astonishing, isn't it? Apparently, when, when people... If people were um, uh, made to be late, by the bridges being up, they'd say, I caught a bridger. Sorry, I'm late, I caught a bridger. <laughs> Meaning that the bridges were raised and you were stuck. And you'd have to wait till whatever uh, shipping had passed through the bridge and the bridge closed again and you could go on your way. <laughs> in the summer, in the video that I made, I covered some of this terrain you're looking at here and I came uh, on the far side down, down past the XL Centre, down the far end of the docks here, because you've got a se sequence of three docks, the, the uh, Royal Victoria, the Royal Albert and the George V dock, and my walk ended just over here, see these little bright buildings here, I'll zoom in, that is where, where there's sort of weird round colourful buildings, that's where my walk ended before, uh, an area called Cyprus bizarrely. And so today's walk is really picking that up and moving it over the other side of the bridge here. And this is the area we're going to walk around here. So you can see how these two videos link together. See, look, this is part of the capital ring. So, like, that is to the um, London Loop what the North and South Circular is to the M25. That's the way I look at it. This is interesting here, look. You've got your standard, don't feed the birds, but with the added caveat that they're hazard to aircraft. It's quite a strong incentive not to feed them, but look, how can these little things there be a hazard to anything? This is a really beautiful little spot here, isn't it? sort of pub and bar here. Apparently this is an old sailor's hotel. This is where the captains of the boats would have a drink before setting off sail. Some wonderful relief work on this, but it's at least 200 years old. And apparently beneath our feet here, there was a tunnel that ran across the river. Isn't that amazing? So this is a Royal Albert Wharf. I pointed it out earlier on from the bridge. This is a relatively new development. Very quiet, not a lot here really. You can see a co-op delivery lorry down there. 
So this is a, a little kind of like artist space, Bow Arts Raw Labs, they call it. And they sort of like to workshops and events and screenings and things there. All part of the, uh, the development. And this is the old pumping house. Look at that. So the old pipes going down here into the wharf, into the dock. It's amazing. So the, the crest of the all-powerful Port of London Authority on the side of this building here. Surveying its domain. This is a really big moment. We've got a bridger. Look, you can see the, the bascule bridge is raised there, just above my finger. Isn't that an astonishing sight? So there should be a ship coming through soon. So this is another huge development going up here. They're going up all around the old Royal Docks. There's a, on the hoarding over there, it says London is moving east, which is something the developers are very keen to push. This idea of the centre of gravity in London moving east, fuelled by the uh, Olympic development. What's uh, infuriating about that sign, London is moving east, is that this is it, London. <laughs> it's the idea that London is only really located in the west and that there was nobody here before the developers turned up. And uh, I've spoken to some of those developers and that is their attitude. <laughs> it's astonishing, really. So this is a development by Telford Homes, which I'm sure will be absolutely uh, full of social housing and affordable housing. I'm positive that is what will be done here to help alleviate London's chronic housing shortage. I try really hard not to be cynical about things like this, I really do. Uh, but it comes, if I do occasionally say those little barbed comments about these developments. It's, you know, we do have a terrible housing shortage in London. Price of property is so high because you know, land is kind of at a premium and when you see valuable building land going over to these uh, developments which aren't really aimed at doing anything to alleviate the housing crisis really, you kind of, you know, I think it needs to be questioned, doesn't it? Look, I could be wrong about this development. This might be a really positive thing for Londoners. It could be uh, Notting Hill Housing Trust are involved in it. So there's obviously going to be some degree of social housing in here. It's just that when you walk around London, as I do, and you see the, uh, the work of the uh, local authorities of the past in building large amounts of social housing, particularly after the Second World War, um, you know, what's being done now doesn't quite stand up against what uh, our municipal forebears provided for Londoners and today we are still the beneficiaries of in some ways. So this is Atlantis Way so if you were looking for the lost city of Atlantis it's down here obviously. I walked down here about six years ago it looked none of this development to my right was here. So I think this land here was part of the old gas works. You can see it's all been overgrown. And as you'll have heard me talk about before, it was down in this terrain here that Stanley Kubrick shot his Vietnam War epic full metal jacket. A little bit further along towards Beckton gas works, but this land here was part of the gas works. We have this sort of it looks like a radar tower. I don't know if this is linked to the airport or if it's for shipping on the Thames. There's the Thames. We're going to get down to the river here. Looking along from Woolwich along the embankment there. I think here we're looking towards Thamesmead here. I mean, I'm saying that because I've just looked on my phone. And then around that headland on the other side you have Crossness Point. But this is an astonishing part of the Thames. Because you you're looking around the, what, I, you know, what they call them nesses, don't they? I think a ness is like a nose. I think that might be where it comes from. Again, one of the many things that I'm often wrong about. But it's something that protrudes out. And these points in the river, you get these really wide points in the river, which apparently are very difficult to navigate in a boat.
go. This is Beckton Radar Station. Just makes me think of the world of Doctor Who and Quatermass again, like when I was over on Swanscombe Marshes. And looking east down the Thames, you can see there you know, the barking uh, flood defences there We're at the mouth of the River Roding. So it's a confluence of the sacred Roding and the sacred Thames. the building site is awash with the uh, flowers that have been given birth by the disturbed earth of the building. One of the nice side effects. You read a lot about that. If you're interested in this kind of thing, Richard Mabe is the unofficial countryside is the, uh, is the book. most grateful. I know Little Acorns Landscapes is usually a fantastic source of plant lore and part, you know, plant identification. If anyone, if anyone knows, that'd be great. So this is wonderful. These are the gates that open up to allow ships into the George V dock. Look at them. Awesome. And look, beneath my feet here, look, over the bridge, you've got the gap there. open up, opening the way to the George V dock. This is the, the entrance to the docks here, the other side of those dock gates. So this is now around, the, this is the gates to the Galleons Point Marina, and here's the uh, notice of possession, confirming the eviction of the people that built this marina from scratch and have been operating it for a number of years and sadly are being uh, removed by the uh, by the mayor of london and the greater london authority so all of this here this, this is all going to go so we're going to be lost to development the old galleons point marina quite like this little footpath sign not that you would see it from the road of course and you wouldn't know that there's this little footpath here, which takes you back down to the river. How wonderful. Look at this fantastic little path here, running along the edge of Albert Island. This is a really magical little world of these little byways, the deserted byways. So I'm going to go up and over this ladder, I believe. My local informant tells me this is legit. I'm going to go up over this ladder here and then along to this little woodland bit here, right by the Thames. So I've come down the steps and the path continues through here. Wow, this is great. Never would have come down here if I hadn't had this bit of local knowledge. magical view of the Thames. There's a really beautiful bird there. I think it's a, I think it's a goose, isn't it? Down there. Isn't that fantastic? Down here, look. You've got the skeletal remains of an old boat just lying on the edge of the mud flat here by the side of the river. If only that boat could speak the stories it would tell. 
skeletal remains of this boat are so magical. I mean, look at the size of the, the bolt sticking out. See this length of rope here? And these grasses all growing in the bottom of the boat. One of the many amazing vistas that we've had on this walk. Isn't that incredible? Looking south across the Thames. And then looking back into the vast expanse of water in the old Royal Docks. So this is the second beach of the day. Really beautiful. We're blessed by glorious sunshine today. This is a really, really little magical little spot here. Just down in North Woolwich on the island, as the locals call it. So this little beach here is just off of Fishguard Way, right near where there was the Harland and Wolf shipbuilders. There's so much heritage here that it can almost be overwhelming. Every single footstep is drenched in story and lore, bursting with narrative. Some police boats racing down the Thames. Look at that. back now round to the, the streets of North Woolwich. This is a very old street here that leads down to this slipway. It takes you down into the Thames. Final stretch of the walk now and just there you can see the Woolwich ferry terminal sticking out into the river and uh, I've just been told that the, uh, the old ferries now have gone out of service and they're just awaiting the arrival of the brand new ferries. So just here beside the banks of the Thames, we have the remains of what was once a pleasure garden in the 19th century, the Royal Pavilion Pleasure Gardens, I believe. And I think it's probably partly serviced by trade from the old paddle steamers working the Thames that would have moored up here. And it's still a park to this day. You see a bowls green down there. So just here, this is the remains of the old pier where the pleasure steamers would pull up. People would disembark here. Apparently Churchill disembarked at one point and they would walk along the pier and they would cross over. And in this negative space here, this derelict bit of land you can see, just here, was a majestic Royal Pavilion Hotel. A grand hotel where people would come and while away the afternoon. It uh, mysteriously collapsed in uh, 2005 apparently. And behind it you can see the majestic North Woolwich Station, which used to be the end of a railway line that came through Stratford. It's such an incredible landscape along here. It's been such a, a revealing and eye-opening walk. I mean, just the, actually in this bit of a riverbank that we've walked around here, around the island, it tells you so much, not just about the history of this area, but about, but about the history of London. And this here is the beautiful old 
North Woolwich Station, which I think opened, I don't know really, sometime in the 1840s perhaps, and closed uh, in I think 2005, 2006. Isn't it a wonderful building? So just over there you can see the Tate and Lyle works and then you can see that brick building there is the entrance to the North Woolwich foot tunnel. So this is the site of the majestic old Royal Pavilion Hotel. You can sit out there and have a pint looking out across the river. You have to imagine it I'm afraid. Well I've sort of got time for on this walk today. It's obviously a a million more things to see around here. I'd like to have carried on to Silvertown and have a look at what's possibly the Ham Creek. But that'll have to be for another day. Maybe I'll come back when they uh, start running the new ferries on the Woolwich Free Ferry Service. So thanks for coming with me on this amazing walk today. Thanks to my, my mysterious off-camera local guide who's given me fantastic insights this area. It's been one of the most revelatory walks I think I've done in London. It's just it's an astonishing area um, and it feels like it's on the cusp of enormous change as well, like much of London. So thanks for coming along. Who knows where we'll be next time. See you then.